Hello, this is Haku Bean, and today we are going to be reading in, in some um, um, D&D horror stories from r slash D&D horror stories. If you couldn't guess that much. I picked up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 horror stories. So I'm going to hope that this goes with just one run, and I'm going to close them as we go. Even though I really shouldn't if I want to re-record this video. Now if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to your channel. Let's get right into this. This campaign, I learned no D&D is better than bad D&D. Trigger warning, one player is inappropriate towards a minor or, or female co-ODM. Gather around the fire, friends, and grab a drink or two. I have two stories to share from my last online campaign. Fair warning, this is going to be a long, rough one. Prologue, switching it up. My story begins, like many others, during COVID, I was feeling the itch to play some D&D. &D. I just moved to a new area, and no in-person groups my preferred way to play were around. So I joined an online group. Instead of playing my go-to melee fighter slash tank, I switched it up and wanted to be the support character. A dwarf life cleric. This is important. We were a party of five. Me, a fighter, a barbarian, a board, a slash warlock, and a rogue. Basically, it was a hellbrew campaign. The plot was an ap apocalyptic event. It was about to repeat itself, and our job was to investigate and stop it. Simple enough. Also, it was codiumed. By a male, the main NDM, and his female friend, the Codium. At the end of the first arc, our rogues turned out to be a traitor to the party. We semi saw this coming because it was intended to be that PC's last session with us. What was not so fun was that I, being the cleric, was the first target. Being over low level, I was forced to play defense on myself while the rest of the party fed for themselves. Party was able to kill the leader and the traitor PC. Me, being the naive optimist, healed the PC and let her go. She would actually join us late again later. I share this part of the story because I feel this opened the doors for things much worse to come. Story number one. Player character betrayal. We continued for a couple of months without incident. One session ended on a cliffhanger. Our party stumbled upon a conflict between a stranger, our bard slash warlock, and our fighter's in-game sister. We thought, oh no, this stranger is obviously bad news. Next session is where shit went down. Turns out, our bard slash warlock made a deal with the big bad evil guy. And the sister needs to be captured slash killed. The stranger was an artificer from the a future that came back to stop the bard slash warlock. The kicker is both the bard slash warlock and the artificer were being played by the same PC. A brawl ensues. It was outside with the PC controlling both his characters and the DM controlling a group of enemies. <sighs> Immediately, the bard slash warlock casts darkness on me, remember, life cleric, and the barbarian as we're near each other. He then said a code word that, that triggered our barbarian to go berserk. 
This was not a spell. This was something uh, like the Winter Soldier. I'm gonna say, um, Sleeper Agents is more or the term that people would use for this. And attack me! After surviving a flurry of attacks, including a crit, I want to cast Banishment on our Barbarian. I was panicking both in-game and in real life. It was the only option I could think of. Barber slash Warlock's PC chimes in with, Can you see him? I was like, what? You need to see him in order to use that spell. I hate Rose Lawyers. I looked over the spell and one creature that you can see was in the description. I felt my heart sank and my blood boil. This guy is not only actively betraying the party, but is now rules lawyering me. I do not like lose rules lawyers at all. Like, the first rule of DMing any with, uh, of me what, uh, and I'm DMing a game is uh, if I think it will, will, will be interesting, it's gonna happen. I don't care about the rules. What the fuck are you doing? I say out of character. He replies, One, betraying the party is what my character would do. Hate that excuse. Worst excuse. You got a uh, one time. Don't do it two more times. If you do it two more times, the, the entire story implodes. Two, the DM can't be expected to remember all of the rules. I am only helping. I respond, Yes, but you're not a DM. I plead my case to the DM. Is there any way this spell can work? Maybe have our barbarian roll with advantage on the save? This DM took the bard slash warlock side, saying that if I can't see him, I can't cast it. My best option was out the window now. I had little HP left and couldn't hope to fight the barbarian. If I stayed, I was dead. If I tried to leave, that's an attack of, of opportunity. Nor could I outrun him. So again, Dead. My turn felt like it took an hour for me to make a decision. I just uh, I just decided screw it and, and attempted to inflict wounds, which did hit, but next turn I was knocked out. I was uh, revived at the very end of the fight and used command to make the bard slash warlock flee. He had flight and every speed buff in the game, so he was forced to book it out of there. Effectively out of combat. The bard slash warlock was no longer part of the party, but the RFS super joined in his place. PC essentially switched characters. I guess he got sick of being magical and wanted to be more mechanical. I can, can get that, but you don't have to be a jerk like they were. My cleric survived, but holy crap did this session leave such a horrible taste in my mouth. It was revealed at the end of that night that DM and this PC worked together behind the scenes to create this scenario, with absolutely no input from anyone else in the party. That should have been the massive red flag I needed to leave. I talked with the DM about how I felt, how it was a horrible session for me emotionally, and it was one thing if the DM took control of the bard slash warlock from then on, but so does that PC have control and a rules lawyer when he was not DM just made me lose it. Not to mention that I was targeted not once, but twice in forced PvP. I get that I'm the cleric and the support, at any spot the enemy would target me, but this was PvP against humans and players. DM said he was sorry and would not have us PvP anymore. Spur alert, we weren't, just no more backstabbing. These to say, my trust in both the DM and the PC was broken. Even if the player character was playing a new character.
Both me and my cleric just didn't trust anyone anymore. I could have and should have left, but I didn't know any better. This was also a paid campaign, and I was already pretty invested in it, both from a time and money perspective. Nah, save your money. Just leave. <sighs> we encountered this bard slash warlock again a couple more times, and the DM let the PC control him. Why? I don't know. But I was ready for any bullshit the PC could pull. The last time we fought him, we defeated him and prevented him from running. As he lay dying, he said a sob story of why he did it, that I wanted to end him. But the DM had my god plead with me to let him live. I don't know why, and I'm sorry to disappoint the readers, but I ended up reviving him and letting him go. I guess the thought of an in-game reward for letting him live was worth more than my personal feelings of wanting retribution. Both in and out of the game. Can't remember what the reward was. He would come back as an ally in the end, but still doesn't negate everything that we that he put our party and my cleric through. Story two: Fancy versus reality. Trigger warning: Harassment involving a minor. This one is short and to the point. I promise. The second story begins with our barbarian. I could tell over voice comms that he was awkward, even by nerd standards. Long backstory short, his barbarian was an escaped experiment by the BBEG, complete with genetic modifications, and bland code work, and split personalities. Over the course of the campaign, his barbarian developed feelings for a female NPC, played by our female code DM. The in-game relationship between these two characters proceeded as normal, complete with an obligatory blackout scene. Nothing out of the order ordinary as far as we could tell. We also had a character arc for this barbarian. Where he visits his hometown and he has his moment to shine in the story. After that, things got... Downright awkward. He and his PC would start hogging the, po the spotlight more and more from talking over people to straight up starting random PvP. He would uh, switch to Berserk mode out of boredom. Main character syndrome was starting to set in. A few, a few sessions later, the main DM informed us that the Barbarian would no longer be joining us. According to the female code DM, the PC had been making a private, unwanted advances on her. Despite I would heard saying not only was she not interested in him, but she was a minor. We all agreed we were better off without him and continued until the main DM gave the Barbarian a second chance after a few weeks. Barbarian publicly apologized to the party and to the code DM. We continued as normal for a couple weeks after. Unfortunately, again, their ear readers, he continued his out game and behavior towards code DM, and we gave him and his character the big, the you know, he hove once we found out. We even warned the FB group finder we were on about him and for him to be banned. Epilogue. There and never again. We continued on, finished the campaign, and everyone, mostly, got a happy ending. I was asked after if I wanted to join another campaign by the same DM. 
I asked if any of the other players would be back, and he said yes, all of them would be returning. I declined, citing my grievances with the one player, and I did not have a good time. This time, I hear the old adage, no D&D is better than bad D&D. Always remember that, at, at, at viewers. No D&D is better than bad D&D. And I have not looked back. TLDR, first online campaign, two players became unsufferable. One was a power gaming rules lawyer that betrayed the party and almost killed my character. The other got a bad case of main character syndrome and made multiple unwanted advances towards our minor female co ODM. I say with the campaign just to finish, but never played or will play with them again. Let this be a lesson, gentle readers, that no D&D is better than bad at D&D. Also, force hostile oh, oh, PvP sucks. That was quite a story. All right. Weirdest and most catastrophic D and D night. I did not have a lot, of, a ton of experience with DMs. Probably say with five to six DMs so far. But I have a feeling this horror story will not be, be for a long time. About six months ago, my girlfriend and I went to a local bar to play a one shot. This is something that bar does on a monthly basis, and it's a good way to meet players, to meet new players in town. Plus, it was a great way for my girlfriend to get introduced to D and D, as she only played three sessions so far. That night, we sat on a table with the DM, a couple like us, and one fifth player. We talked for like ten minutes to introduce ourselves. The DM had run campaigns and one shots before. The couple were here for the first time. They had played before, and a fifth player and the DM knew each other. After that, we were given character sheets and we started playing. Quick synopsis: We were in jail in one of the nine hells, and a session would be about jailbreak. Fine. Very quickly after the session started, we were introduced to an NPC, another inmate. That right off the bat at was annoying. His way of talking, the end of voice acting, his attitude, everything in him provoked disgust. We thought, okay, that guy is going to be the annoying comic relief of the show, etc. It became way worse than that. The character started to ostentatiously, ostentatiously hit on the character of the fifth player, the guy the DM knew IRL. Implied that they in game characters would have sex in their cell that night. That PC he kind of played along and the DM and the NF player started to touch each other's cheeks, hold hands, touch nipples, sexually lick their own lips. It became super weird. The DM would tell Ellis later on that night that the initial intent was to make that guy annoying or gross to us. Well, it worked. About halfway through the session, during an RP section where we all shared why we were put into jail, that character, played by the DM, very casually mentioned that he was here because of deviant sexual behaviors. And even mentioned something that should never be talked about around the table with people that you don't know. I will give you guys the opportunity to guess what it was. We as players did not have that chance. The, the DM even used the P-word to describe the past of that character, and the reason why he was put to jail. As we all, pieces and the players ourselves, grew disturbed and pissed and generally started to want to kill that guy with our bare hands. The DM mentioned he needed to go to the bathroom. We all sat there, visibly uncomfortable by how the session was going. The woman next to us started to say that she straight up wanted to have that character killed. 
Alza said that she felt uncomfortable and wanted to go home. Her boyfriend said we should talk about it to the DM and draw some lines. Lines here, to which we all agreed to we do. The DM came back and the couple's boyfriend very respectfully told him that we should keep some subjects off the table. The DM took that pretty well, did not feel offended by it, apologized and said that he might have gone too far with it. He said that the intent was to make the character annoying and hated by players. Again, it worked, but by no means is he wanted to make us have a bad session. At that moment, I said it was okay, that people make mistakes, and we all agreed that the session could go on if that character disappeared from the plot. This is when the... Uh, a DM said, Guys, wait for this showdown. It will be epic. I have a big surprise for you. The night was already kind of weird, and I could not imagine how anything would make this session epic at that point. Plus, that might just be me, but if you want to create an epic twist of surprise, by no means... Or do you mention there is going to be twists? Anyways, the session resumed. That super gross, annoying character turned out to be a cunning devil from the Nine Hells. And we all fell into his trap. That was crazy railroad, and even though oh, I know that plots and one shots are hard, are hard to pull off, sometimes you need to railroad things. Man, it was kind of crazy. Our players had absolutely no o -O agenda or agency at all. We had to run through a corridor with flame aims following us. And if we stopped, then we would die. Aren't we already in a prison in the Nine Hells? Wouldn't that be better at that stage? That for some reason, we got all spread out and caught separately by the devil. The devil would offer us a deal to escape to prison. Kill lists of people of his choice. My character decided that he would not take the deal. Jim told me that if I did not accept, he would kill me. I said that at this point, that might be better. My character was now immediately killed and removed from the game. Seeing what happened to my character, my girlfriend decided she would take the deal. The other couple's boyfriend decided to decline just like me, and the other two players took it. Time for the big reveal, ladies and gentlemen. The name on the devil's list, the people all that we had to hunt and kill, were not one else, but you guess it, ourselves. In a triumphant voice, the DM said to us, Here it is. This whole show has been nothing but Battle Royale. Roll initiative. We all looked at each other with a uh, feeling space between disbelief and embarrassment. The moment the other lady straight up got off the table and visibly showed she was not interested to finish the session. My girlfriend fought with that last player for a couple of turns. I honestly cannot remember whether or not she won. We all wanted the session to be over. After the session, we talked a little bit with the DM. He wanted to gather our impressions for the night. We talked about that annoying and disgusting character. I mentioned that these topics should never be brought to a game table. To any table with people you never met before. I also mentioned that I was not a fan of PvP and D&D in general. That is subjective, of course, and for me to reveal all well, did not... And for me, the reveal did, did not really work on me. I could see the other players agreed, but I did not want to rub it in. The DM then asked if we had a good night still, and the other couple's boyfriend looked at him, stood up, and without answering, and left without answering his question. 
the yum asks again. You guys had fun, right? Again, no answer. My girlfriend and I left the table, leaving the DM with his friend. I could not believe that this guy had run sessions before without knowing that some subjects might never be, should never be brought up with strangers. I could not believe that he led us to a PvP battle royale thing. I do not have a lot of experience as a DM myself, but I already know that PvP and DM is a controversial thing. I could not believe that the DM and that player started to act weirdly and hitting on each other and touching cheeks and nipples. That was so weird and uncomfortable. Were they high? Were they hitting on each other out of character? I will never know, and I do not want to know. Anyways, that was my weirdest and most cash off for D&D night by far. We have not tried and gone and again to those one-shots with around people since then. Yeah, I can see why. Right into creepy people like that is just the worst. DM says because I missed two sessions, my character loses a level. It's as it says in the title. Well, okay. Then what's the rest of this story here for? Like, what is all this for then? Don't, don't give me that. So a week or two ago, I was late to an online session which started at around 7. I didn't get there until 7.30, so my DM gave me a strike, which assists me great to combat players not giving a reason for showing up for his D&D campaign. So just over the weekend, there was another session in which I only found out what was was happening late the night before and forgot about it during the day because I had some stuff to do. So ten minutes after the session starts, he messages into the into a group chat we have for the D and D campaign that I would be getting my second strike and that would be a level down. I see this message and say that it was only my second strike, so it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, but then he explains to me it, that that is how the, his strike system works. One strike is a warning, second strike is a level down, third strike is a removal of a class feature. Well, you have a dumb DM that should not be e e e DMing. Which is then protests that a second strike shouldn't be a level down and is too strict. Which he then says this was always a way and that he told me and that he told me to this, but I had forgotten. So after a small debate in the group chat, I decided to just stop playing C and D. So that's the story. Let me know if I'm in the wrong here, but because I'm not sure. No, you're not in the wrong at all. This guy was kind of being a jerk anyway. Also, as a D&D, &D, players will be late. Sometimes they'll be completely absent. Be an adult. Don't do this strike system crap. You know, this crap, as a D&D, &D, this must be a fun game. It's not a freaking obligation. No one should feel like they have to do D&D. &D. No one should feel like I, 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 they're going to get a, 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 like bad marks for not doing D and D well enough. That just removes all the fun, and it's just not cool to do. People have lives outside of your games. Anyway, curse character. This is a bit of a weird one because this is sort of a two-parter. Why are you playing two-parters here? I feel like the player I want to play most is Curse and it's starting to get to me. Hopefully it's allowed, but if not, I fully understand. I made this character a few years back when I joined the D&D Discord with the help of DM who told me I was welcome to join his campaign. I'm still semi-new, but at the time, I hadn't played D&D since I was 9 and, and played advanced D&D with my uncle. 
I mentioned I was super interested in playing a noble bard who'd recently been disinherited by his mother. I was trying to raise enough money to afford an expensive paint set and he had to leave. Everything was going in well and I was super excited to play. This DM walked me through every aspect of my character and I felt very confident in playing. The night before we had a session zero, he messaged me to tell me that bards were actually illegal in this game and if I wanted to play, he would help me make something on the spot and put out a bunch of homegrown that I clearly wasn't prepared for so that I could make a not bard bard. Well, okay, then why did you say okay to it? Once, as soon as someone says, as I want to play a bard, and you're like, and you were like, actually bards are not allowed in my game. First of all, why are you banning an entire class? Why? Why do you not like bards? That's a weird thing. But also, if you don't want it, then just say so in the first place. Anyway, at this point, I didn't want to play this campaign anymore. But it was also so desperate to play that I figured I won't let the DM ruin it, so I made a new character and restarted. About half an hour into the call, we got interrupted by three other people who started yelling at our DM because he was running a session without telling them. We all ended up awkwardly dropping out to call at that point and never spoke again. The second time I tried to play as this character started out with me asking the DM if my stats were fine. She told me they were, but then later I noticed she'd been fiddling with them without my knowledge or permission. I wasn't fine undoing point by foreign stats, but I wasn't fine with her going behind my back. My second clue should have been that we were all trying to land down a day where we could all play. I live in the Pacific Northwest, oh same, and work Wednesdays to Sunday from nine to ten from one to ten. And they all knew this. It seemed like every other day the DM asked if we could play at six PM Sunday night. To which I would have to remind them I couldn't. I offered to just duck out because we had conflicting schedules, but everyone seemed pretty adamant on making it work. Well, that's kind of stupid. Eventually, we meet up at 11 p.m. on a set, and the night, and we start the Lost Minds of Fandelver. Oh, I actually just finished that. With the expectation that once we finished the module, we would move on to something that the DM had made, and we were all excited to do so. Session 0 is afoot, and we're all ready to start. It's me, a few other newbies, and the DM, and won't let us talk to as a group at all. She's adamant on controlling the party, and just letting us roll. We attack some goblins, I roll not one, my rate if you're Blake breaks, I feel like this is another sign, I should just stop trying. We get to crack Miles Cavern and I'm trying to engage with the other players. Do a little role play because it's not in my Mark's character to just go into a damp, disgusting cave at this point in life, and it would be nice to at least get some insight and talk, but no. After asking if we could roleplay a bit to talk out our plans, DM said, Okay, and then talked over me. Eventually we stopped playing for the night before getting to clog, and we just didn't have a second session. So I gave up. Clearly his character or his curse, and I'll never get to play him. The real horror story was thinking I could actually play D&D. <sighs> I think you just had really bad luck with really bad DMs. Scuff the yum and pushes game back five weeks and then kicks me and my friend. Me and my friend were trying to find a game. It would be his first game and my second, and we found a DM. You need three players. 
he had a friend who won who won his joint, so that rounded it as at four. Games was to start for an area a week and it's a day of and as such if session zero started. Replaced with and I quote, I almost forgot and pushed the session zero to next weekend. We thought it was weird, but whatever. People get busy. Damn, the bad grammar is really gonna kill it. Session zero comes and it is rough. Like this. We're doing foundry, which took me a bit to figure out, but uh, first thing about the other er, guy unrelated to any of us leaves right after making his character. Figured he was busy, but then the DM's friend leads to Discord call 30 minutes later. Leaving me and my friend with the DM. From my understanding, you're supposed to talk things over or about the campaign in Session Zero. But, well, there was only two of us. Next weekend comes and I fix my sleep schedule so I can be awake, so it's my friend as he is normally asleep at the time due to work. The amount of everyone was, was ready and his friend replied with, I'll be busy because I'm playing the Elden Ring DLC. I thought this was a joke, but it was not, and the, the game was pushed back again. Me and my friend eaved off for obvious reasons, but kept it to ourselves. Next week comes along, and a random that nobody knows dropped out, out, out so game was postponed until the DM could find two new players. Alright, this one at least made sense. That was Saturday. At some point today, me and my friend were kicked from Discord and blocked in Reddit without a single word from him. So yeah, that was a waste of nearly five weeks. Clearly. <sighs> Players feel left out, so they change characters. We had a player who was playing a source for a know-it-all. A studious person, something that the party sort orally lacked. The rest of us were basically mercenaries embedded, thrown together by the crown to hunt down some more evil villainy. One session, the sorcerer tries to talk tough to the wrong person and gets put on his ass. We all kind of laugh as he deserved it and move on, but apparently the player got mad we didn't immediately behead the guy because the DM came up, up to us after and told us he was upset. We discussed it and the DM felt it would be better to make sure the player feels included and not the butt of every joke. To be clear, we had a couple other moments where the player would yell at someone for their hypocrisy or steal magic items from the party members who they were clearly meant for and he kept getting some sort of backlash for it. I pointed out that it wasn't that he wasn't included but he kept putting himself there and we were just left to react. We moved on and kept playing That's, and at one point we learned that some of the villains were actually controlled by mind flayers. A cool twist is something to tie us to the rest of the campaign. Well, the sorcerer somehow ends up getting pardoned by the crown and leaves his uh, campaign to study and help from the towers of some great city. Relief was what most of us felt. The DM finally spoke to the player and we are either going to get a new player or we'll just be the remaining party members for a while. Or so we thought. Not 10 minutes later, we did we meet this next character. Uh, get the Yankee fighter who was literally made as a new weapon for the Mind Flayers. He was captured and we had to free him. He insisted he could help us defeat the beasts and bring balance to the world. The party debated for a long time and game whether to release him or not. To dismay of the party, there were two of us who hated the idea of this person joining us. Was well, because within seconds of meeting, he had already made a game knowing one of the players' weaknesses and insulted us twice. There too, thought he would be useful. Well, common sense lost when we cut him down and he joins the party. Fast forward to a night or two later, and he is trying to steal the gold and magic items from his last PC, he off one, one of the other PCs. The session ended and we left it there. That was great. 
I think this is going to be a really good change for the party. Something we really need in the party. I didn't bother talking to him about it. We all left and haven't talked about it since. I told the DM, I took the DM and this aside and told him I was out. The DM told me that it doesn't have to be that bad and we can deal with them together. Nope, I told him I'm not sticking around for that and they can have fun without me. Two weeks later and I get told by my other friend and in the group that this new character was also written to, in his backstory to be a trapped god or some bull. And he had been trying to figure out the session so they could go unlock his powers. Well, that's just annoying. Late players, are they the problem or is DM not doing enough? So playing a long format level what 1 to 20 campaign currently level 19, getting things ready for the ending of the campaign, the first half of the campaign went by so smoothly. But most of this took place during the pandemic, making gaming easier for us. We all mostly worked from home or with no contact. Even though everything was going smoothly, the problem grows as two players are consistently late. The DM's sister, or Andrea, and her husband, Michael. Wow, just pulling out names. Um, I mean, the DM's sister, Alex, and her husband, Tom. At first, it was 20 to 30 minutes, not a huge deal. Or gave people time to chat and get into their characters, but this time would keep getting longer and longer. And there was no excuse. It was just Alex was sleeping in, or a new game which we play is and Tom wanted to squeeze in and all the playtime we could, or they were watching a show. Oh, we've all been there, but eventually it got to the point where DM would tell them the campaign was starting an hour earlier, and they told everyone else so they would show up on time. I don't know if our DM told them this, but as they showed up on time or even the few occasions they were early, they were visibly annoyed not gauging with anyone just heads buried in their phones. After a few sessions of this, eventually they go back to showing up late again, going from their normal late time to now an hour or an hour and a half late. Our DM has started reaching out to them individually to see what time they can show up for each session. They will give him a time and still show up late. One of our latest sessions, they gave him a time and still showed up two hours late. To our last session, deciding to cancel the night before. There have been several incidents involving Alex and uh, Tom. They are also problematic. When they missed a session, Alex was upset that uh, because, tar uh, because the party took a shortcut to reach our destination and took away from her character autonomy. That's not what my character would do. It's a quote, and DM's response was, Your character wouldn't take a shortcut? This is what she realized instead of listening to the recap or, you know, asking Dutch Matt as to what happened, she based her knowledge off the last. A session off of Graham text in the group chat or the cool thing that happened that people were talking about around the table. Alex plays a wizard and was routinely upset by enemies using spells, as in such as his command or suggestion during combat. Tom plays a fighter and is constantly feeling as though he's the weakest player at the, at the table due to the fact that he doesn't have any spells. Yes, we all know the Marshall Castle divide is a problem, especially at higher levels, but our DM has given him several magic items and homebrew abilities to help, but he just says, I don't even enjoy playing this character in combat. The DM has offered to help him make a new character or give him ways to counteract spells, but it's not enough. They are both routinely on their phones, and Alex Alex does a lot of the party artwork for us, so it's excusable, but Tom will be here on red one time. Even and took a FaceTime call in the middle of our session with his other friends across the country who was playing in their own campaign with their group. Because he thought it would it would be fun. 
They have gotten into fights resulting in one or both of them leaving in for the session or when we're about to begin resulting in us starting late or ending earlier than planned. I guess the question at this point is, are they the problem players or did our DM do enough of to try and get them involved? If he did, how would you tell him it's time to cut off at them and from the party roster? What are some things several others have brought up before including Alex and Tom? Our party has four other members, so they're inconveniencing five other people with their, their behavior. I have no um, qualms about players being late, but these players are downright disrespectful. Pulling out your phone during the game... Being mad at enemies for doing things that you do. This isn't a Zelda game. They will do shit that you do. A lot. Alright, let's move on. We've got two more stories. What the... Okay, I might be a little bit stupid. Hang on. Horrible campaign leads me going no contact with my sister. Crossposting from RPG Horror Stories, which is basically the same thing as this one. So recently, my wife, MW, and I were playing in a campaign. It lasted all of 10 minutes into the third session before we rage quit, and I end my contact, and I end any contact with my sister. So... It'll, it'll be less than 10 minutes to read, right? It'll be less than 10 minutes to read, right? I only have 5 minutes here before it's 6 p.m. The main characters, Sister S, her husband, and the DM. Me, my wife, three other players. They were all great. I hope the game can continue as long as they want to play it. Backstory, we have a child that is severely ill, and I don't say that looking for pity, but it is relevant to the story. We have limited free time, obviously, between working full-time... Okay. Not right now. Anyway. Between working full-time, multiple kids, and doctor's appointments every week. We have had our world flipped upside down with us, us barely getting by some days. It's the hardest thing we've ever been through. This kid is strong and so freaking sweet even through it all, and goddamn life isn't fair. We are obviously emotionally, mentally, and physically at our limits most days. S has a habit of dramatic attention seeking and has been telling all of us how depressed for a while. How she's suppressed for our various reasons. Every time we see her, one, one of the first things she thinks is some new reason that she is so sad and how hard it is for her. A constant pity party when she knows what we're dealing with pisses us off. We have played with that with S and DM before with varying results. The DM lacks even a basic understanding of 5e mechanics. Even reading things he will get it wrong. He plays favorites with his wife, S, because she is a major or bitch to him, even if he doesn't. I also constantly fail, have to beg to make an, an ability check, which he always uses the wrong ones, and somehow I never make the final hit on a creature, and anything creative results in nothing or him telling me no. He can also be very blunt and sarcastic, but will pout like a child if you act that way to him. Never apologizes, and does not handle being told that, that he's wrong. Nothing we can't deal with, we're not perfect either, I can be a pretty bad rules lawyer, and get impatient often. My wife and I... I had discussed all this and agreed to just shut up and not say anything because we were really excited to play. And we really feel like we were on our best behavior and targeted for no reason. DM told us he was in a campaign, but he wanted to out because DM in that game was playing favorites with his wife. 
This will be really funny in a second. Oh, you said it lasts off 10 minutes. What the heck? Session 1. The first session is relatively uneventful. The DM does his usual oddball rulings and obvious misunderstanding. Nothing I do results in anything or he tells me no. As does not have a character finish when... And starting to end so a whole first half of the, of the session finishing our character. More than once, as in the DM have loud arguments during the game, she argues with him about his rulings and anything she doesn't. And like, being so rude it made it awkward for everyone else, repeated rolling her dice and male trace while DM was role playing. In general, she was the most disrespectful person there. I made it really hard to focus or become immersed for the rest of us. It was still overall a fun session thanks to the unnamed players. My wife and I agreed to continue playing and not at what would happen was pretty ridiculous. It seemed like everyone was doing the same, but we definitely saw some looks on the other players' faces with a lot of the rulings. During the arguments and once in a while one of us wouldn't be able to stop ourselves from remarking sensitive to a damage type Sensitivity to damage each type giving a creature advantage. Overall, although we were still pretty excited. Between session one and two. In between session and one and two, we skipped ahead at a few levels and picked some magic items. Session two, DM gives me a set of a seat of honor for having my characters finish first with. All of it at part of the updated backstory, so I'm seated at the head of the table. Uh, this kind of stuff is a red flag. S is also given inspiration for doing so much good work on her character and being so prepared. Turns out she had not started leveling her character from what I could tell, had no spells picked, still didn't understand her class, subclass, or abilities. She also started with more items than anyone. Her AC was uh, boosted to a crazy 25 somehow. How in the hell? The enemy gets talking and she then makes changes and finishes her feet. It's on picking some ram ass feet that's crucial for a set of the at night's dungeon. I mean, it could have just been coincidence. One person doesn't make it this night. Two will spend most of the night on her phones, fairly involved in the game. They had good reasons for doing so, not complaining. The session ends early that night. DM still manages to understand most mechanics. To misunderstand most mechanics makes me beg for ability checks that result in absolutely nothing. I somehow never had the last drag on a creature. It's just coincidence, right? He does the same shit to my wife. She sat by a trap floor and was the second person into the room. And at this point, I'm really wondering if we want to continue playing with them. A few rooms into this dungeon due to the feat S took earlier, DM talks to her and describes it as an NPC and just tells her where to go, what to do, and gives her a special gift and treasure. But that just has to be another coincidence, right? The session ends with our party finding and talking to an important NPC. Of course, everything me and my wife say is wrong, and the DM makes her to tell us so. The other two players are basically on their phone and not playing at this point, so that saves the day by saying all the right things. Oh, and the NPC she, only she could talk to is earlier is friends with this NPC. So now they're all best friends, and he hates us. What the fuck? Session 3. Before next session, my wife is uh, picking up something from S and DM's house, and DM has the nerve to tell my wife that she took over the session. He says both of us did, but really, her. S tells my wife that she was crying after the last session because of us, and how we played and took over. Some obvious rejection, I would say. She again is so sad and this really tore her up, and we should feel bad for her body, she on us every chance they get. The nerve of these two to try and guilt trip at my wife knowing how hard it's been for us recently. 
especially when I'm not around. My wife was playing a glamour bard built with roleplay focus and not combat, with some insane bonuses to all charisma abilities. S was a frontline class who at least didn't have a ne negative charisma. They went on my wife to not involve herself with roleplaying after we talked to DM. And her sub class as clarified it was roleplay focused before the campaign started. Now two sessions in and they make her character pointless. Why we even went for next game, I do not know. So we arrive for session three. S first comment that day is about how no one at her work said anything about something. It was literally the most self absorbed, psychotic thing I have ever heard in my life, and at that moment I realized as is a toxic, shitty human. It m immediately changed my perspective about S and DM. They, a way she said and pouted and wanted even more attention, made my skin crawl. So now the session is starting, and the very first thing this motherfucker DM does is complain about people taking over the game and some other shit that, that was made up. But I couldn't hear him. My blood was pumping so fast, I could not believe what I was hearing. I do not know oh, how my wife and I didn't lose at this point. But I saw them and said, Ed, it sounds like you're talking about one of us. If it's my wife or me, it's bullshit that you would do this because it's not true. Because you already talked about it. In my opinion, he wants to tear down. And he had to make a show of it. I could be wrong, but I do know that talking to us in private, there became a big scene about how to tell the table that my wife and I had problems, was fucked up. And I told him that. He says, I'm not calling anyone out, I'm just saying. The next thing this motherfucker DM does is a 10 minute one on one with S, with the same NBC from um, session 2, telling she is the lead of the group, and she in the front of the line at all times. She is destined for a great artifact. I tuned out immediately. I was seeing red and shaking at this point. But I've heard things like they better fall in that line, and he was talking about my wife and me. But I know for a fact we weren't taking over any portion of the game, and they had already invalidated all of my wife's character. Keep in mind, the last game, there was half the party gone or distracted. The only complaint came from S. They didn't ask any of the other players how they felt. I really don't know why she feels this need to tear us down and give no love at the time of her life. Or is the only distraction from the bullshit of life that's on a family and a kid? She was the focus of the entire session too, and obviously that wasn't going to change. My wife texted me and agreed to leave. We made up an excuse and left. So... Oh, I have no idea how the night went. We, we went home and spent the day with our kids and had a great day with my wife's family. In that moment, I realized how little they think of my wife and I. Most of the story is about DM's actions, but it was as bitching and making him. Why she wanted to ruin the game for us, I'm not sure. I'll be speaking to him ever. I will not be speaking to them ever again. I don't know when S changed into this vindictive, hateful, selfish person. The next day, they, they had no remorse and turned, turned hateful or with threats and name calling when I accused them of being rude as fuck. I didn't realize how bad it was, so I started typing this out. And I swear to go, uh, there was more. I wish I was exaggerating. I didn't reach out to the other players, just let them know we wouldn't be returning and they didn't have anything to do with it. They were very cool, and honestly, the only reason we made it to a third session. And last but not least, probably the darkest of these stories. Last DM traumatized me. <sighs> Sorry if this ends up all over the place. I'm a little scared when you're recalling tra traumatizing events. So, bear with me. Oh yes, by the way, this is a not safe for work post. I checked and made sure it wouldn't be unsuitable for YouTube. It seemed not to be. 
constant warning, essay, possessive of behavior, and creepy shit. So, I, I've known her by last name since around the time we were in middle school. She, MTF, is a year older than me. 28, FTM. But I was always close to her cousin until her cousin and I had falling out. Because her cousin was really abusive as a friend and just generally unpleasant to be around. The cousin tried to make me stop talking to my sister because Z didn't like my sister. At last year, I lost such an degree and connected back in 2019 with our mutual friends, her best friend and her best friend's wife, reconnected it with me and offered to teach me how to play D&D. Since then, we all started hanging out again, playing D&D and everything was great until 2020 for obvious reasons. The campaign and we've been playing fizzled out for obvious reasons. Yeah, not really hit. I up, up with FIV 2022 with my last DM, who I will call R from, from now on. Started her campaign. It felt good to be playing again. Everything was going well with RSDM. We didn't have being a rules lawyer. I'm ca start calling her Rachel. Or I went to me about what to do, but like we had in our previous 2019 campaign. Things were going so well, I invited my coworkers to join us, and he fit right in. Little did I know, that was the beginning of the end. I won't lie. My coworker and I had a mutual question going on. He had a girlfriend and I had person that doesn't make moves unless I know I'm not sitting on any toes. So nothing came of it other than some very mild platonic flirting. By this time, I found a new game I was trying to set my character up with. Because what's D&D without a little bit of romance? Plus, all of the player characters were low-key flirting anyway. So it wasn't at all for us to allow the NPCs to flirt with. We liked working as our characters and the NPCs so much. Rachel had a Discord search by RPS of characters in between sessions. Which was great for me because it meant flushing out the romance between my character and the NPC he was romancing. No problem. Rachel did communicate that she doesn't RP with anyone she isn't actively dating. So she ran in the RP with romantic feelings for me. And not lines between us and our characters blur. That's... It's always a bad thing. Over the course of several months, I was told to by that coworker of mine and Rachel herself. Rachel would talk obsessively when I wasn't around about how she was interpreting our RP as, rom as a romantic relationship, even though our table kept urging her to talk to me about it. She threatened my coworker with physical feelings to staying away from me, going so far as to forcing him to leave my house when the girls were hanging out, so we could be alone. She even told her other friends we were dating when we weren't, and frequently referred to me as her boyfriend. There were a couple of instances where she'd get drunk in my house, and sit against me, even when there was a whole other couch for her to sit on. If I moved, she moved. I'll tell her not to touch me, and she would anyway. But I always wrote up as her being drunk, not an excuse. There were a couple of games where she'd physically hold me down, and wouldn't stop tickle me, tickling me until the rest of the table physically removed her from me. Ugh. That's always the worst thing to do, to have someone do to you. Obviously not the worst, but I hate when people do that. Eventually, there came a time where I decided, perhaps against my better judgment, to take her to the movies because she wanted to see a very pink movie very badly. I grabbed her up and almost immediately her hands were on me. I forced her hands away and asked what was wrong with her, and asked that she kept her hands to herself. She didn't. She kept trying to grab me and even end, ended up yanking my hair while I was on the highway. Rachel literally went off touching me until I bloody her in the parking lot of the movie theater. It was a 12 minute drive in total. That didn't stop her from yanking my hair all the way into the movie theater. I had a lot of trauma, you see, so I went into straight on fun mode. I can't replace it, even though I kept telling her to stop touching me. It wasn't until we got started and she dropped hers on the floor that I realized she was on something. I pulled her to the side and asked, Are you high? And she goes, No, but I am pretty drunk. It was 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. And this absolute mess was swaying while standing so drunk. 
I should have taken her home. But I'm cheap, and I already paid for the movie, so we were going to see it one way or another. Even if that meant I was not in my seat, just keep her from touching me in the theater. At one point, I escaped to the bathroom to text one of the party members about it because I was so close to having a breakdown over it. But she talked me down to the best of her abilities. After that, I politely told the whole group chat that due to personal reasons, I wouldn't be accepting hugs or physical touches from any of them anymore. I had told all the rugby league what happened and asked them not to go off on it because I really liked the, like playing in the after we got to her being drunk that day. I didn't know about her behavior at this point. I know all great might come to my newly set boundary. <coughs> Excuse me. The only person who gave me grief about it was Art. I can't remember exactly what she said, but it was something I can do. Oh, so because one person touch you inappropriately, we all have to be punished. That first was you really get to make that point. Thankfully, the table backed me up and made sure my physical boundaries were maintained, even though the entire incident with Rachel and me was ruining my relationships at the table. The thing is, like, I saw a, 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 a red flag take, take from us having boundaries. So that's when it's like, please don't touch me. Because one person have done an invading your physical space and touching you, we all have to be punished. Why do you, why do you feel a, why do you view a, touching someone, I mean, not being able to touch someone as a punishment? That's weird. That's suspicious. Anyway. Why? Because she was clearly favoring me as evil. She let me get away with more than the others, played my back somewhere, and made my character pretty much the main character of the game. That and my actual relations with the other two games at the table were strained by proxy due to OSA a trauma. It was so bad, at, and the situation with Ari stressed me out so much that when my coworker needed my help leaving his girlfriend, I couldn't get from. Ultimately, the group fractured and fell apart. And who did I, who did I get stuck with in the front of ours? Rachel. Just me, Rachel, and my best friend. Everyone else wouldn't have anything to do with me, and said I seduced Rachel to my side of the argument. The argument being I wanted us all to talk about our feelings because there was obvious animosity at the table and I wanted to, I wanted to dress as a group. The entire time I'm this was going on, I had Rachel in my ear telling me all the terrible things that everyone was telling her about me. Thinking back now, I can't help but wonder if she didn't manipulate the situation to isolate me from the group. Because she knew they protected from her. I actually told Rachel what she did to me. Because it was and still is unclear how much she remembered from the incident. And she re went off the rails. My best friend and I had to go to her house to make sure she didn't crit fell a, sa a death saving and throw ORL. And had a whole. That's a really neat way of putting it. I had a whole interview with her about how she needed to get sober. This is when she confessed to everything she had been doing behind the scenes to me. The threat of, obs of obsessive behaviors. All of it. I felt sick. I was stuck with this stalkery abuser as one of my only remaining friends. I didn't want Rachel to unsubscribe from life, so I told her I'd keep being her friend as long as she told her friends who weren't dating. Followed by new, strict, personal boundaries. No touching. No filling a towel to me and my time. Staying sober. Rachel relapsed three times that, uh, that I am aware of since then. And every time, I looked the other way. The final straw for her and I was back for Rachel and I was back in March. It was my birthday and I was a bit depressed because my boyfriend wouldn't be making it into town. So my best friend 
the suggested that the two of us could go on a date. He had planned for boyfriend and I, strictly as best as the best friends who we are. We both honestly needed it and had an amazing time. But of course, Rachel had to make it a problem because she wasn't invited. She actually told the two of us she was angry with us. I tried to politely explain why she had no no business feeling that she wasn't feeling angry that she was invited to date. That was meant for my boyfriend. And she said, "You're invalidating my feelings." I said, "Oh yeah, remember my boundaries. You're not entitled to me or my time." To that. Rachel responded with a multi-paragraph message in our group chat, but I was a, a horrible, abusive person because she felt like she had to walk on eggshells around me, and because of that, she couldn't keep being my friend. She then tried to give my best friend an ultimatum, which backfired for her. I have only heard from her from my coworker when she tried to dox me on Twitter for arguing with a rad fam that she admires. That makes me sus. Anyway, since then, I've reconnected with two members of that group. My coworker and Rachel's now ex-best friend. My coworker in particular told me she had honestly feared for my safety because Rachel also she knows where he keeps a spare key to my house. So there's that. Safe to say, I will never play d d with Rachel ever again for as long as I live. Good decision. Anyway, that was uh, r slash d d horror stories. As per usual, we took over an hour to read this. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I know that I'm going to be drinking some water after I...
click on stop recording in today. So until tomorrow, goodbye.